In the previous lecture, we have seen the vertical redundancy check, that is the VRC. In today's lecture, we will see the longitudinal redundancy check, simply LRC. Let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we are going to know the types of error detection and we will be mainly understanding LRC and its performance. Let's start the session by knowing the various error detection methods. We have basically four error detection methods. The vertical redundancy check VRC, the longitudinal redundancy check LRC, the checksum and finally the cyclic redundancy check. In today's session, we are going to mainly focus on LRC. Let's start with what is LRC. In VRC, the parity bit is appended to every data block. Whereas in LRC, a block of data bits is organized in rows and columns. Since the block of bits are organized in rows and columns, we also call LRC as the two-dimensional parity. Now, how these parity bits are calculated? The parity bit is calculated for each column and sent along with the data. We know that the data is going to be organized in rows and columns and the parity bit is calculated for each column. And the block of parity only acts as the redundant bits because these redundant bits have to be sent along with the data so that the receiver can receive all the data block as well as this redundant bit. These redundant bits are necessary for the receiver in order to detect whether there are errors in the transmission or not. Let's see an example now. Find the LRC for the data blocks. Four data blocks are given and we are required to find the LRC for these four data blocks and determine the data that is transmitted. So we are required to find out the LRC that is the redundant bits and we are required to determine the data that is transmitted to the receiver. Let's see how to solve this problem. We know very well that in LRC, the data is placed in rows and columns. Let's place the data blocks in every rows and column. The first data block is placed in the first row. The second data block is placed in the second row. Similarly, the third and fourth data blocks are placed in the third and fourth rows respectively. This is the first data block, the second data block, the third data block and the fourth data block. How to calculate the parity bits? We have already seen a point that though the data blocks are arranged in rows and columns, the parity bit is calculated for every column. Just recall this rule. When we have odd number of ones, we use one as the parity bit. When we have even number of ones, we use zero as the parity bit. Now let's see how many ones are there in the first column. That is this column. One, two, three, four. So 4 is an even number, so we have even number of 1s, so we use 0 here. Now for the second column, we have only 1, 1, so that is, we have odd number of 1s, so we use 1 here. In the third column, that is this column, we have 2 1s, that is 2 is an even number, so we use 0 here. For even number of 1s, we use 0, and for odd number of 1s, we use 1. In the fourth column, we have 3 1, it is an odd number, so we use 1. For the fifth column, we use 0 because we have two ones. And for the sixth column, we have odd number of ones. For the seventh column, we have even number of ones, so we use 0. And for the last column, we have odd number of ones, and so we have 1. So what is the last row? That is this fifth row. This fifth row is the LRC. This is a block of parity bits, where each parity bit is generated from a column. So this block is called as the redundant bits. Precisely we call this as the longitudinal redundancy check code. With this data block, we are going to append this LRC code. So we know that this is the original data block. The first four rows are the original data block and the last row is the LRC. In the question, we have solved the first half that is finding the LRC. But the question is, we are required to determine the data that is to be transmitted to the receiver. And what is the data that is transmitted to the receiver? The data that is transmitted are the first row, that is this block, the second row, that is this block, the third row, this one, and the fourth row, this one. With this original data block, we are required to attach the LRC code. The LRC code is 10101010. We can notice here this is also 10101010. So this is the LRC. This LRC code acts as the redundant bits which enables the receiver to detect whether there is an error in the transmission or not. How the receiver calculates? So he just places this aside. 
He takes all these four data blocks, he computes the LRC for these four data blocks and the receiver just compares the LRC with the LRC that was attached with the message. If both are matching, the receiver understands that there are no errors in the transmission. If the LRCs are mismatching, then the receiver ignores the data packet that it has received because of transmission errors. Let's now analyze the performance of LRC. LRC increases the likelihood of detecting burst errors. In comparison with VRC, LRC is having greater performance in terms of detecting burst errors. But still there is a problem with LRC. Let's see what is that. If two bits in one data units are damaged and two bits in exactly the same position in another data unit are also damaged, the LRC will not detect the errors. If we see an example, it will be more clear for you. Let's say this bit is modified and this bit is also modified. That is this 1 is becoming 0 and this 0 is becoming 1. Let's calculate the parity bit. This is 1 and this is 0 because this is corrupted and this is 1, this is corrupted and this remains the same. So here the same positions in two different blocks are modified but still we will get the same 0 only. Why? Because this 1 is modified as 0 and this 0 is modified as 1. So when we calculate we have two ones in this data block that are affected but still it is zero only because we have even number of ones and that is what this point is dealing with. So if two bits in exactly the same positions in another data unit are also damaged, LRC checker will not detect an error and that's the drawback of LRC. I hope now you guys understood the LRC and its performance. Before we conclude, let's do an homework problem. Find the LRC for the data blocks 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and determine the data that is transmitted. I request you to solve this problem so that you will gain more knowledge in LRC. That's it guys. I hope now you know the types of error detection and you understood LRC and its performance. Thank you for watching.